Ah, that man will mood. The place where only the truly worthy can go. The place which they say once you go, you can never come back to this lowly aperture and shutter speed mode. And let alone the lowly auto mode. Yeah. Whoever uses the auto mode. The only the manual mode is the one for true photography enthusiasts, people who understand complex things like the exposure triangle, depth of field, and everything in between. Or is it? Well, that was a bit dramatic, but yes, the manual mode will give you more control over your images. But I have been a long believer in done is better than perfect, and that is where the manual mode falls short. Well, uh, take a look at these images. If you look at it, you will see that I have uh, completely overexposed the image because before this I was shooting still images, so the shutter speed was really low. And you can see I've completely overexposed the image and if I turn the brightness down a little bit in Lightroom, you can also see that I've managed to get a motion blur because my shutter speed was low. Or take a look at this image, beautiful hut, right? I see the craftsman inside, I go in and then I get this because my exposure, whatever it was, it was set for the outside sun and I am inside the house, it's darker and I get completely dark images. So to avoid this, we have two modes, the aperture and the shutter speed and we'll go through each. Let's go. Okay, first up the aperture mode. So the aperture mode basically controls the aperture which is a small hole at the back of your lens and makes it so that the size of the hole actually indicates how much light goes in the sensor. Now aperture while controlling the light also controls something else the depth of the field. So if you have a wide open aperture you will have more light but you will also have very shallow depth of field and if you have a very high aperture or closed aperture, you will have a very long depth of field, everything will be in focus, but you will also have a little light, but you adjust it with the other two components, that is the shutter speed and the ISO. Okay, so why am I telling you about the aperture and the ISO, uh, shutter speed mode? Because in an aperture mode, the camera helps you. You set the aperture to whatever you like, so you set what depth of field you would want. If you want a shallow depth of field, if you want a very good depth of field, so you go for the higher or the lower aperture. If your ISO is set on auto, or maybe you don't set the ISO on auto, you can just set the ISO at a predetermined level. You set it to 100 or 200, whatever you want. The camera can then change either both the ISO and the shutter speed or just the shutter speed if you have the ISO on manual. So this leaves you of the responsibility of changing the settings every time you change situations. If you want to capture something that is moving a little fast, your shutter speed adjusts automatically. If you are going in somewhere that is a little dark, your ISO and your shutter speed will adjust. Now, if you have the ISO on manual, it won't, but otherwise it would. The shutter speed goes down and you get the image. Now, exposure might not be perfect, but then you always have Lightroom. So, this is the reason why I personally, when I go out on trips or I'm out in the street shooting, I always default to aperture because that helps me Forget about the exposure, kinda, and focus on my composition and the shots I'm actually getting rather than, is my exposure alright? Am I looking down at the TTL or even at the screen? Now, the ISO, on the other hand, uh, can be moved manually or, you know, automatically it adjusts. However, I will tell you to keep the ISO relatively low so that it doesn't create too much noise on the uh, image. Now, the shutter speed mode, uh, the shutter priority mode rather. Now, shutter priority does the opposite. 
you set the shutter speed and the camera does the rest if you have the ISO on auto and if you don't you will still have to set it yeah we can talk about it yeah but in shutter priority mode you are going to really benefit from it if you are a sports photographer or a wildlife photographer or you are going to some similar events where you can quickly change the shutter speed depending on whether you want still photos or freezing frames or you want uh, you know what uh, bloody waterfall or a light trail and the camera will automatically adjust the aperture for you there is no need for you to change everything by yourself it adjusts which is why if you are out and about aperture and shutter priority modes might just be better for you when time is not your friend and let's be honest most of the time it's not you might be sitting there trying to fix the aperture and the person might move or the car might move and your entire frame gets changed or maybe you may be at a vantage point and the sun has already gone down a few notches or the colors change or there's a cloud you never know so unless you are shooting a commercial shoot where there is time on your hand you have artificial lighting and everything I think it is better for you to go for either aperture priority or shutter priority and try your luck I think you will get better results and you will get more results another last but very important tip many people have this idea that if you shoot at a higher ISO you're gonna get bad result but hear me out on this one you are not going to get a bad result why because most cameras nowadays can shoot very well in two, three, four hundred, up to 400 ISO, I'd say. Yeah, if you nitpick, you might be able to find some noise, but other than that, they don't. So just go out and shoot, the images will come out very clean, trust me. So don't worry too much about the ISO going high, yes, not 32,000, but like, you know, 3,200, sorry, but yes. The ISO can go high and it won't really cause a lot of problems in your image. So just don't worry, go out and shoot, have at it. Thank you, see you in the next one.